Hello all, my name is Andrew and I'm going to tell you the story of how I went from running in this to this. It all started when I was four. I used to go to this daycare place called Candy Apple and while the other kids were hanging off the monkey bars, I was doing laps around the playground. I'm pretty sure the people who worked there thought I was going to be some kind of running prodigy. When middle school rolled around, I joined the track team, obviously, but here's the weird thing. Every year I got super excited for track season and every year I ended up not liking it. I love the meets and the competitions, but the training runs, the stretching, the shoes, everything else just felt off. So when I went to college in 2009, I just stopped running for seven years. After college, I picked up some part-time hours at a local running store and like a lot of retail jobs. There was a lot of downtime and not much to do. So I started trying on shoes like hundreds of shoes. Neutral shoes, stability shoes, racing shoes, and these weird things called motion control. Of all the shoes I tried, my favorite was the New Balance 1400. It was light, it was fast, it was flexible, and I'm like, yeah, this could work. While I was working on getting back in shape, I was also working with hundreds of running customers, and I started to notice something strange. Almost every single person that I fit was either injured or in pain or recovering from some kind of running-related surgery, and I thought, I've got to get to the bottom of this. My first idea was experimenting with switching to a lower drop shoe, which if you don't know, drop just means the difference between the height of the back of the shoe and the height of the front of the shoe. Basically, how much does it tip forward? I bought a pair of shoes called the Hoka Bondi, which looks something like this, and it had a four millimeter drop, so it was flatter than my New Balances, and it was also curved, so I'm like, this should help with shin splints. And it did, but then I started getting hip pain. A couple months later, I replaced my Hokas with a pair of Ultra Torrens, which were zero drop, aka completely flat. They also had a, and I quote, foot-shaped toe box, which made me question the other brands that I was selling, like, wait, why aren't all shoes foot-shaped? Anyways, to run in the ultras, I had to change my stride from a heel strike to a midfoot strike because apparently human beings did not evolve to wear giant tilted marshmallows on their feet. My first couple weeks were pretty rough, but after I built up some calf strength, I started to fall in love with midfoot running. It just felt more primal, you know? The problem was, even though my torrens were zero drop, they still had this big, cushy platform. My feet were sinking into the shoes, and after a couple months, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to get a racing flat from Ultra called the Vanish, but even at four ounces and 14 millimeters, I still felt like I was running in too much cushion. I remember thinking, where do I go from here? There's nothing left to take away. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like you were trapped in a loop and no matter how hard you tried to escape, you just kept ending up in the same place over and over and over? That's how I felt trying to find the perfect running shoe. So when one of my coworkers told me about this brand called Vivo Barefoot, I was curious. I ordered a pair of Primus Lights which were only three millimeters thick. And when I put them on, I thought, Okay, pavement, it's just me and you. First, I was worried about stepping on rocks or glass, and I did get nicked a couple times. After a few months, my feet started to build up a nice layer of callus, and I was like a running hobbit. And the best part was my cushioning system never needed to be replaced. It just kept regenerating for free. The other thing about barefoot running is that it made me more aware of what was going on in my body. One day, I was going through my stretching routine, and I thought, this doesn't feel good. I'm not gonna do it anymore. The same thing happened with my warm-up routine. I just stopped doing it. And do you know what happened? Absolutely nothing. For the past three years, I've been running almost every day and I have had not one injury. No shin splints, no plantar fasciitis, no calf tears, no hip pain. Nothing. This is virtually unheard of in the running community and it's mind-blowing to me because when I was running in cushioned shoes, and stretching and warming up, I was getting injured on a monthly and sometimes even a weekly basis. But this story is not all rainbows and unicorns. In the summer of 2019, I started getting aches and pains in my fingers and it would not go away. Six months later, my hips started to hurt and then it spread all over my body. When Planet Fitness closed because of COVID, I thought maybe this is a good thing save money, work out from home, ditch the machines and just use free weights, but the pain would not go away. First, I had to give up weighted squats and then I couldn't even do body weight exercises without setting off inflammation. So I did the only thing I could do. I just kept 
running. Supposedly trails are easier on the body, so I decided to stop running on the roads and bought myself a pair of Vibram Five Fingers, aka toe shoes. First I was worried that without weightlifting I was going to turn into this little string bean of a man. But honestly, going back to being skinny didn't bother me. While I was always obsessing about my muscles at the gym, running brought this sense of balance. It was like I was made to do one thing, and one thing only. For the first time in my life, I didn't feel the need to change anything about my body. I was just happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this long, wild story. And if you did, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be doing a video series on all of the questions that I wanted answers to when I was just starting out with barefoot running. Like, why did brands start making cushioned shoes in the first place? How do you transition to barefoot shoes? What is the difference between a heel strike and a midfoot strike? Can you run without any shoes at all? And what do barefoot runners do in the wintertime? all that stuff. If you have a question about barefoot running, drop a comment below. And if you're already barefoot running, what do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like so we can teach the YouTube algorithm that we are both upstanding citizens who are going places in life. And if you know someone who might like this video, share it with them. All right, I think that's it. Happy running out there.